Welcome back to Mega. Let's play Shadow Hearts Covenant. Last time we spent an extremely long episode for me and a relatively short episode for you exploring the Idar Flame. This time we're going to take a much more but not completely direct route because there is still a little more treasure to gather from this area before we move on. First things first, go right, find a battle, get surrounded, get comboed, and get utterly destroyed. Well, at least not utterly destroyed. Well, that battle could have gone better. But, uh, we're alright. Alright, so we want to head down the right path here. As you can see indicated uh, by the map on screen, we're following the green arrows today. And we're just going to pick up, uh, I believe, three more treasure chests and then take a beeline straight for the end. Okay, I am glad I'm taking the first few battles off screen as uh, cold fingers do not make for effective use of the Judgment Ring and I'm missing everything. Uh, we don't have the uh, the gold necklace on anymore, so we shouldn't get quite as many battles. Uh, let's see if we can grab an item here. Uh, I would like to take this route here. Well, I got a perfect ring victory that time, so my fingers are warming up. There should be a treasure chest somewhere along here, such as right here, Paralysis 2. Well, that didn't go terrible at all. I'm lying, that went absolutely terrible. Why do I miss so much? Even when I hit the ring. All right, so we're gonna backtrack out of here since we don't need to do anything in this little section here. And now we're gonna head back out to the outer, uh, kind of, I guess, line of the diamond. Okay, yeah, so even though the map shows the uh, area looking like a diamond, obviously with these paths, it doesn't actually look like a diamond. I'm guessing the map creator just did it for simplicity. Um, oh, look, another one. Yeah, there are a lot of these battles throughout the area, but I don't know, I just, I find this area is just so massive that uh, if you go out of your way to get all of them like I did in my test run, even if you're not gaining extra battles from the gold necklace, you're just going to get so much experience. You just get super over level. In fact, I might even start running from a handful of battles around here just because there's so many of them. All right. Basically, just keep hugging right and eventually we will find what we are looking for. Treasure. In fact, we can hug right pretty much the whole way uh, down. Ah, there's my treasure. Three of them. Treasure trove. Got Strike Expand, I can use that. We've got Soul Benediction, heal status effects if I cared. And what else? Cosmic Bracelet, status protection, we've seen that before. Yeah, now just keep uh, hugging right and we should make it all the way out of here. You don't need to go and gather extra experience or extra net battles if you don't care to. I think I like this chance the best. I like this shape the best to uh, Joachim. And uh, by the way, Joachim's a bat because he's a bat. Of course he's a bat. And uh, yeah, that battle, where am I going? I'm going this way, okay, good. Yeah, that battle went relatively fine. Uh, the only downside is how is my affinity doing? So my affinity is starting to catch up a little bit, uh, especially with Lucia. I've been uh, putting a lot of work in with her, uh, especially between her and Karen uh, since we started this episode. Blanca has great uh, compatibility with pretty much everybody. But yeah, you can see my, uh, my affinity is decent at this point. It could be better with some characters like uh, Geppetto and Lucia. They still need to work together. Anastasia and Karen, Lucia and Blanca. Uh, I could pro like if she wasn't the highest level character I had, I would put her in with instead of Lucia right now and have her work with uh, Karen. And uh, I guess you don't really need to work with Golden Bat or Joachim, but you do need to work with Karen, definitely, and Blanca. Yeah, we're, we're doing decent here. 
keep hugging the right and we will eventually get to the end. It is a long, long trek. That battle actually went surprisingly well. It's what happens when you uh, get the, the jump on the enemy and even if they are hard enemies, you kind of destroy them pretty quickly when you can combo off the start and they're all grouped together and just smash them with spells. Perfect ring victory. Didn't e They didn't even get a shot on me, which is always nice to get, especially when a lot of those fights go terribly, terribly wrong. Well, that's another perfect ring victory. I think I've finally uh, fixed it. I think my hands are warmed up now. How the bloody hell have you idiots gotten in here? And why are you surprised to see me? How did you guys get in here anyway? Surely you knew we would show up a bit. <laughs> yeah, kind of breaking the fourth wall, but uh, you know. <laughs> Do or die, right? Aren't you even a little pleased? Eh, well, you sell me items. Use up all your cash. No, do not use up all your cash. Might never meet again. Somehow I doubt it. Anyway, these idiots are stupid. Yep. These two are kind of like super useful because they always sell me great stuff, but they're also kind of useless in the fact they're annoying and are stupid. <laughs> All right. If you want to ride back uh, to the entrance, they will uh, send you all the way back and then you can just take the straight middle path right up the gut if you want to uh, finish up or, you know, get all the way back here. In my test run, I did that. This time I will not be doing that because I'm more leveled than I want to be, even if I'm not technically over leveled yet. Um, I want to shop. You guys have anything worthwhile? I got lots of roots. Uh, I got lots of those. I got enough of those. I could probably go for some tents, but we can do that later. Don't need to do that right away. Yeah, none of the uh, walkthroughs that I found listed the Chainmail Bell as accessible before now, which is why I was happy to have found it uh, in the uh, cathedral in Paris there before. It's nice to uh, pick that up. I don't have anything listed here uh, as far as shopping goes, so we're not going to bother to buy anything. But look at that, 166000 You think that I would have more than enough money for the rest of the game? <laughs> don't leave here with a less than 100000 or you will regret it. Uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all for that. Let's go over here. Save. Okay, we're back. Let us go into the final door. Of the first part of this area. Yeah, that was only the outer area of the Idar Flame. Next, we have a new map, and we have an interior to work with. Okay, so the way this works is we've got... The enemies here are the same, by the way. Uh, the enemies inside the uh, Eidor Flame are the same as the ones that were technically, I guess, I think that's called the outer uh, area. And this area is creepy as all hell. Yeah, I'm not sure what this area reminds me of, but it reminds me of something in another game I've played. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Maybe it's something in a Grandia series? Could be. Anyway, there's a button here. As you can see, these uh, bluish purple energy going over to the left there. And this will reduce the power, therefore unlocking the door. It's not very uh, complicated. Uh, you can do either side of this area in whichever order you like. If you perfect the ring and attack efficiently, you should be able to pick up uh, uh, an easy, perfect ring victory and finish the enemies in one round if there's only, you know, three or four enemies, depending on which ones they are. The uh, Hattie enemy has higher defense than most. Uh, the rest of them should all fall to a normal attack from either Karen or Blanca or Yuri or Joachim. Uh, the Zamzua enemy is another one that uh, also takes more than one hit. 
Uh, do we need to go up there yet? Let's... Can I go up there? I cannot. I'll go this way first. Or no, I could go up that way. I'm stupid. I couldn't remember where I was on the map. Alright, I'm not going to go and show off all the doors unless I just happen to walk by them like this one. I'm just going to go and find all of the buttons here and then we'll go and press them. And then we'll go and collect treasure. Alright, so there's a green one over there, but we're not going to... But before we go in that direction, we need to go and turn off the green door. So let's uh, hit that one. Which removes that door. And, like, we could have picked up that treasure chest and then backtracked, but why? Let's go over here and hit uh, the yellow one. Uh, there's actually two yellow ones to fully unlock the door, as you'll see here. There's actually uh, two forms of power going to it make it real simple like this isn't much of a puzzle at all it's more of just go and you know do the thing and uh, collect treasure in the process feather bracelet and over here we've got what do we got hit area expand that I don't need that's fine whatever um boop -do. I can't do that yet so that door's still closed so I gotta go this way Well, I knew this was going to be another long episode. I've already been recording for over 50 minutes. <laughs> and as you can tell, we are just barely beginning this episode. I just really, really find the, uh, the amount of battles in this area and just how long it is to be really annoying. Not, not only for you know editing purposes, but uh, just in general. It's just really tedious. Treasure chest, thank you. I'll take that later. Uh, if you can see the pink up in the top left, we need to go turn that off before we can head over there. So let's go in this direction and let's turn that off. And that'll let us get through to where the uh, yellow door was. Okay. Now let's go over here, take the wrong path first, that's fine, go down here. This should be the last of the little colored fan electrical door tile things. And this one just leads to a treasure chest by itself, so let's grab that. That should be the first four. We get willpower, which I believe prevents SP lowering, if I remember correctly. Uh, where is it? It's in with the status effect ones. Yeah, stops SP lowering. That's about all that's good for there. I have adjusted my party once again, trying to keep the uh, lowest leveled characters in my active party. Even if they don't have a whole lot to work on together as far as, uh, as far as affinity goes. We'll eventually get to a point where affinity doesn't really matter to work on anymore. And there we go. Now we have access to a save point. Before doing that, let's go right up here and grab this partially hidden treasure containing a pure root. That should be five of the treasures here on the inside. There are two more left. They are not available until after we go through there. And I need to tent up and save. Okay, we're back. And well, I guess I could show off my setup real quick here. It doesn't really matter. Um, again, I'm choosing lower level party members. Actually, in this fight, it was it's important to bring two of uh, Yuri, Joachim, and Karen. Doesn't matter which two, just pick two. Um, it'll make your life easier. Uh, other than that, we have protection against paralysis on everybody. And I ran out of paralysis things, so uh, Joachim uses spikes. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It doesn't sound pleasant. Holy shit, that thing's huge.
doesn't want to let us through. Okay, we have mini boss time. First things first, we might as well uh, set up some buffs. I believe there are two of these guys we have to deal with. These are Mother Filaria. They each have, if I recall correctly, 900 HP. They are light based. They use paralysis. They can heal each other and they have a few different uh, elemental, uh, light based elemental attacks. The only thing you can inflict them with is delay. So I don't even have that set up because I really don't care. The important thing is 28 hit combo in this fight. And now you don't need to do it on both of them, but you do need to do it in order to get a seal of strength. We definitely want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up some buffs here. Get our Gale going for myself. At least we don't have to deal with the Giga Worms using it over and over and over again. And sure, we can set up Barrier, why not? That was way early. Okay. And what we're going to do now is we are going to fusion into Fides or Fides or power Gauntlet. it. No idea at this point. And we've got a two person combo, which is all we really need. Uh, I could set up things. Maybe I'll do Arc Rage. Should I do Arc Rage? Yeah, we'll do Arc Rage. Why not? Oh, I missed. I'm sad. So now that we have all of the arc abilities, or at least most of them, um, this is pretty much how fights are going to start. First round, I'll use one arc thing, or in Yuri's case, he might use Sorm and Stand. And then we'll combo up and we will start taking the enemies to task. But uh, yeah, other than that, Fights, generally at this point, get a lot easier. Now, part of that is definitely because we are setting ourselves up for it. But at the same time, um, like because of all the quote unquote grinding we did, well, we're going to run into enemies anyway. We wouldn't have run into quite as many, but we definitely still would have run into a lot of enemies. Uh, even if we didn't use the gold necklace in the previous episode. Manifestations, no. Crest magic, yes. Scale spark. Uh, it doesn't matter which one we hit. Just hit one, whatever. We're trying to get a 28 hit combo. The only time you can really rely on that is at the uh, is the first uh, the first move in a fight. Uh, do we go for Joachim first? Let's go for you first. Inferno. All right, this time we're not going to completely cheese our way through things. We won't use a combination of Mind's Eye and other things. Actually, I think even though this is a physically based attack, I don't think Mind's Eye increases the damage we deal with it. That's one of the interesting things is it ups our physical attack damage from a normal attack, but at physical based skills, it does not affect. I don't, the only one I used it on in my test run was Yuri. So I don't know if it would work the same on something like uh, Death Tron Hammer, which is what we're going to do to get our last few hits here. Not that we need to go this far, but actually, you know what? I can save some uh, MP and use Grand Slam at four hits. That will be enough. These guys are immune to instant death, but I should still deal enough damage, maybe? They're supposed to have 900 HP. How did it die from 890? Eh, well, whatever. We got enough uh, combos. The thing with a combo is you have to make sure you do it on a single enemy, because uh, I don't think the combo numbers go from enemy to enemy unless they have a certain status effect that we almost never see. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, passion. These are guys are uh, not or 
light elemental. Uh, we don't get a boost from this because we're in our light dress, but let's try it. Just to show it off. It's a pumpkin. I don't know why it's a pumpkin, but it's a pumpkin. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe Cornelia is trying to do something in season at this point. Yeah, these enemies not particularly dangerous to deal with, so like, don't, don't worry. This fight is not hard. Um, yeah, just pretty much get everyone together, beat the crap out of them, and move on. All right. Ow, that's a lot of damage. Yo, King. More damage. Geppetto. You know what? Yeah. I pulled up on that one. I didn't want to miss. I've had issues using his uh, ring lately. But uh, yeah, simple, straightforward. Other than buffing up at the start. There's nothing else particularly important about these fights that you need to worry about. Protection against paralysis is nice. Didn't even come up with this one, I don't think. And once we're finished with that... It's weakening. Hey, we already fought two! Yeah, there, there, there's nothing different about this fight at all. This is the exact same fight. Except for I got Grandpappy on this time. Broken! This game is broken. Um, yeah, uh, we still have to get the combo in this fight. And the reason why we still have to get it in this fight is because we'll get another Seal of Strength. So I'm just going to cut this fight out since it's a repeat, and then I will see you in a moment. Okay, we finished the, the uh, fight off. I went out of my way to make sure to use a uh, 28 hit or more combo against each of the enemies in case I got two seals of strength. Um, but no, you don't get uh, lucky like that. Uh, one other minor note here is the direct press ability that we learned from the Hattie enemy uh, in this area does work against these guys, but it breaks combo. And since they have such low HP, you don't really want to do that to them if you're trying to get the seals of strength like I was. Of course, you could always avoid getting really powerful items like that, though I don't know why you would. It stopped beating. All right. All right, before we go any further, Geppetto needs Step Doubler back on. Next thing. Make sure we're healed up, even though we have no MP. Um, over here. Where is it? There we go. We get a replacement man. And down here. Okay, up here. I'll figure out where I'm going eventually. We get the final item, a seal of speed. Seal of speed, very, very important. Makes more of a difference than probably anything else. And here, at a long last, after recording today for an hour and 36 minutes, and an hour and 55 the other day. We have reached the end of this incredibly long dungeon that seemed really short for you guys because it's only two 25 minute episodes. Anyway, tent up. And next time I will have my party all set and ready to go and whoa, you see that effect? It looks like we're slowly moving closer. Like we're being sucked in. Anyway, that's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.